Have you ever wanted to show live data in your app using charts and graphs just like this? Well, no problem. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that in this video. Hey everybody, what's up? My name is Fergie and I'm a UX designer based in London. In this video, I'll show you exactly which Bravo tags you need to be able to use graphs and charts within your app. The first thing to know is that with charts, you have two options. You can either create a pie chart just like these, or you can create a bar graph just like this one here. So let me go through with you exactly how to set this up in our Adobe XD document. Here I have my design ready to go. What I'm creating here is a crypto dashboard. So I want to see how my investments are performing and how much I have across various crypto coins. So you'll see I've got a few different screens. I've got my home screen just here. Now this is going to be where I want to show the uh, prices by market cap of the most popular crypto coins and then also I want to see what is trending. The next screen I have is my overview of my investments as well as profit and loss analytics. So I'm going to put some graphs here to see how my investments are tracking. Then if I want to drill down into a specific coin, I've got this screen set up here so that I can have a graph showing me how either daily or weekly that is performing, whether I'm losing or gaining anything in my investment. And then I'll also list here a little bit like a statement what my investment is worth. Then I've also got a wallet screen. So this is just where I'm holding some virtual cards that I might perhaps use with crypto balance on them. And you can see I've already added one, but I'm going to include this feature to add another card. Um, and these are going to be cards that I maybe perhaps want to use when purchasing more uh, crypto coins on the market through this app. And this screen is just simply so I can enter those card details. So now you know what screens I have, let's go through all of the different Bravo tags we're going to need specifically for those charts. So here in my layers panel, you can see all my artboards. And if I select my first artboard here, you can see I've got things grouped into different sections. So the first thing I've got up here is my container top bar. So this is my top bar navigation where my photo would perhaps go to my profile screen. I've got the name of the app. I'm going to be calling it Exchange. I then have my current balance. So this is showing me the total in pounds of what my investments are worth. And then this is the first graph I want to be displaying. And this is showing the prices by market cap of different coins. And you'll see if I go into this group here, it's just a regular container. And I've called it cap so that when I bind the data using Bravo Studio, I know which one connects to which data. And I have my title here. I have my area, because remember every container needs to have an area set so that Bravo knows what size to make this and display it on your screen. So this is just a rectangle with no fill, no border. Then I have my chart background. Now this is my gray rectangle here with drop shadow and the rounded corners. And then we have our chart layer. Now you might be wondering, well, what is the chart layer? It is quite simply just a rectangle and similar to when you set the area, this doesn't need to have any fill or any border, but you do have to include that Bravo tag. So the tag you're going to want to use for a bar chart is component chart bar. And that's all you have to do for setting it up in your design document. The rest of the details I'll show you are added when we're in Bravo Studio binding the data. So then here where I've got the trending coins, it is exactly the same thing. I've basically made a copy, renamed it, given it a new title. And you can see this one goes off of the screen here. Now that's totally fine. You could adjust the artboard height if you want to, but you don't really need to do that when working with Bravo because the containers are going to dictate how long the screen is. It's going to stack all of these containers on top of each other. And you'll notice that is why you can see there's literally, there's no space in between them. They are right next to each other. And then I have my nav bar here, which is just using the layer tag. And that means that it is going to stay in this fixed position and it's not going to move when we're scrolling up or down on this screen. So these are all of the different things on this screen. You'll see everything is inside of a container. So our menu bar is a layer. So we have our first market cap container, the trending container. I then have a container here with our balance inside and we have the top bar. So it's container top bar. If we move to our second screen. This is pretty much exactly the same again, but this time I'm using a pie chart. So the tag is slightly different. 
and that it is component chart pi. So the tag is always component chart and then you define what type of chart you want to have at the end by adding pi or bar. I have a few slimmer graphs that I want to display here to show sort of profit and loss analytics for a couple of the coins that I hold. So again, all of this is inside one container and you'll see I've got all of these different layers here, the area being the important one to set the size and the space. I've got my chart backgrounds. These are just the gray rectangles. And then if I just expand my panel here, you'll see I have a component chart bar for these two crypto coins here. And again, we've got our same layer here for the menu bar. Once you've created one chart, you really can just copy and paste it onto the different screens that you want to have a chart. Then once we've exported this to Bravo, we can bind the data and that's where the difference really comes in. Then you guessed it, we have another container here and inside of this, I have a layer that I have named card. Now this is because this is gonna be a list. It's basically repeatable content and Bravo will be taking the information from my database when I connect it via API. So inside my card, you'll see I just have date and then the amount and just this dividing line. And of course, we've got to set the area. Moving on to our card screen. Again, I have our container top bar. Then I have a container here that is going to be pretty much a stack of the different cards that I enter into this app. The aim of what we want to do here is anytime we enter card details into this screen, it displays another card in our list here. And that's because we'll set up a post request. So we'll fill this in, it will post it to the database. And then this screen here is going to be getting the information from the database to displaying the list of the cards. So our card here is a container. And again, with the area set and then inside card, you can see I've got things like my Visa logo, component SVG, and we need to use this tag so that Bravo will render the graphic correctly. And for our add another card button, it is simply just the container with the shape and the text inside and the area. Next up, we want to add all of the links between the screens. So we're gonna go into prototype mode. The first thing I'm gonna do is set my home screen here by selecting the little house icon. And then we're just gonna add those prototyping wires. So here, as you can see, I have wired up my navigation bar to go to all the different screens. We've set our add another card button to go to that input screen there. But you'll notice the back button doesn't have any wires. And this is because we've used a Bravo tag to set this action. So by using the action go back Bravo tag, Bravo will know to navigate the user to the previous screen they were on. This way, it is a much more natural navigation and we're not having to wire this up for every instance or force it to a specific screen. Once you have all your links in place, it is time to use the Bravo Studio plugin and export. If you don't already have the plugin, then search for it and hit install. Then the first time you use it, it will ask you to log in. So go ahead and do that. And then you're either going to create a new app or select an existing project. So because I already created this one, I can just hit update. But if we wanted to create a new one, we could just do that here and I could call it version two, hit create, and that would sync to Bravo. Now that I've synced my project, I can log into Bravo Studio and come to my apps dashboard here and select my project. And we can see all of the screens have successfully synced. The next thing to do would be to go through and bind this to the API collection to display the correct data. So if I were to select this screen, open the overview chart, you'll see we've got chart data here. And I've already connected this up to one of my Airtable database, just as an example, to show you how this is gonna display on the screen. So I have a really simple Airtable database just here, and I used the wizard to set this up in Bravo. So once you have entered all of these connections here, the graph will display the data. Now let's go and preview it using Bravo Vision. So here you can see our graphs with that sample data from our Airtable database and they've loaded up really nicely. And you can also click into the charts and get this little overlay showing you exactly which one that is, which is really handy when you have many, many data points. But for me, I can see that because I've included Bitcoin, it's kind of skewing the scale and throwing it all off, so it's not really visible. So next time around, I might want to change that. All right, let's go to our investment screen and see how that is. We can see here we have our pie chart overview, which is a breakdown of what my investments are made up of, of which coins, and that's what the pie chart looks like. So again, loading up this page, we saw that it had a really smooth animation. I've got my profit and loss bar charts here, which if I click into one, hopefully I'll go to my breakdown page. 
and see the weekly chart as well as the statement breakdown below showing me day by day what my crypto coins were worth. I can hit the back button and we should go back to where we previously were. And lastly, let's check our cards wallet page. So you can see it's displaying that card we've got. We can hit the button to add another card and it knows that these are input fields. So if this were connected to a database, we'd be able to post this and have it displayed, but we haven't set that up just yet. We'll do that in part two. So we'll go back. Let's go back to our home screen and you can see again, those animate as well. Now you know how to set up charts in your design document. Come back and watch part two to find out how to connect that to the data source. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.